Hi, I'm Maddie. And I'm Simon. We love answering your questions about the natural world, so thank you for all of your comments. Yeah, okay, the first one is from Neutelfett, who asks, how do insects breathe without lungs? Well, air enters an insect's body through a series of tiny holes called spiracles, which is a brilliant word. <laughs> yeah, and most insects have one of those spiracles on each side of their body for every body segment that they've got. And yeah. from those holes, it then leads to a massive network of tubules, basically. So all the air goes through and through and permeates through the insect's body. Yeah, and at the end of each of these tiny tubes is a special cell called a tracheal, and this produces a, kind of a moist layer which helps the gas exchange from the air to the insect living tissue. Yeah, I mean, it's a little bit in the kind of similar to the way our lungs work, yeah. but rather than the gases um, diffusing across into our bloodstream, it diffuses across into each and every cell mm. in the insect. It just goes to the cell specifically. Yeah, yeah. However, um, larger insects are able to sort of boost the air around their body by contracting their muscles like one at a time alternatively. So they're sort of making their bodies larger and smaller. So it's pretty rudimentary, but it does help. But actually there's some clever adaptations as well. So within these tubes that go throughout the body, there are these little air sacs. And these air sacs basically help to, well, they kind of store air. So for those insects that live in kind of dry and desert environments, they can close the spiracle to stop any water going out through evaporation and then use those big air reservoirs yeah. to breathe. It's very clever. And actually these air sacs also kind of act like a scuba tank. So for aquatic insects, they use them as a reservoir so they can breathe underwater, but also it helps them to regulate their buoyancy, which is pretty cool. Yeah, and they also use these air sacs to um, help grow. They don't, insects don't grow in the same way we do. They've got this hard exoskeleton. So they have to get rid of one exoskeleton and then a new softer one is underneath. So to break the first outer shell, they basically take loads of air into these air sacs, break the outer shell, and then as their internal organs grow, the, the air in the air sacs gradually see. It's sort of like inflating, yeah. sort of like crack the shell yeah. and then like decreases again. Yeah. yeah. Insects are cool. You're going to love this question. Okay. It follows on pretty seamlessly actually. And Sloops Watt has asked, if there were more trees and therefore more oxygen, yeah. would animals on this planet get bigger? Okay, yeah, interesting because the major limiting factor to insect size is actually the oxygen concentration. Mm -hmm. Because they rely on diffusion for oxygen and carbon dioxide to pass through their body, um, through their little spiracles, as we've just found out. <laughs> yeah. I love the word spiracles. Me too. <laughs> um, they can only get so big. So, oh, okay, because basically yeah. the oxygen and carbon dioxide can't get in or out from that tiny little space inside yeah. a big body. There are some pretty big contenders for insects though. Yeah. I mean, stick insects can get to like this big, maybe? Yeah, yeah. And the like concentration of oxygen in the world's atmosphere is 21%. Yeah, but if you go back in time to about 290 million years ago, the concentration of oxygen in the atmosphere then was between 30 and 35%, so much more. Mm. And sure enough, the biggest insect mm -hmm. of those days was a giant dragonfly, which had a wingspan of about 71 centimetres. Oh, that's which is huge. like, I mean, that's massive, isn't it? Magic, yeah, enormous. if you went down to your local pond and saw that, you'd be terrified. Oh, yeah, that is crazy. But I mean, the reason that there was um, an increase in oxygen was because there was an increase in trees and vascular plants, and they were all photosynthesizing, so therefore there was oxygen around. Amazing, great question. Thank you so much for writing in the comments below, we really appreciate it. Yeah, don't forget to subscribe, share this with your friends, and we will see you soon on Earth Unplugged. Bye. Why don't all trees grow as massive as this giant sequoia? And what stops them shooting up into the clouds and out of sight? And this is why we think beetles are awesome. <laughs>